Hello, every. <coughs> Hello? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey! What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. To my YouTube channel. I miss you guys so much. It has been a year. Uh, 2020 has officially arrive and there are so many new things to come and so many things to be done but now i am here to talk about <laughs> Woo! my dating experience in la i always have people ask me how it's been living in la but then it follows up with the question how was dating in la well to be honest I didn't do much dating here, but the date that I went on was enough. It was enough for the whole year. It was enough to cover anything that I may have missed along the way. I was like, ah, count me out. I'm good. I don't need this. I'm done. <laughs> so let's get into the story. There was a guy that I met, of course, like any other millennial, I met him on Instagram. And when we went on Instagram, it started with DMing and then it was like, okay, we exchanged numbers and it was getting cute, right? We were talking and having fun and we found out that we had things in common. Like I like Martin, he likes Martin, you know, and anybody that can vibe with you on Martin. Okay. And y'all probably think like, why is she not pronouncing the T in Martin? But that's how you pronounce Martin. It's not Martin, it's Martin. Anyway, so you know, we were we were talking, vibing, and it was cute, and I was like, okay, I was newly out of a relationship, and I was like, um, you know, why not? Why not? Why not try something new? Because I am not here for, you know, dating apps. Okay, confession, confession. I got on dating apps at one time just so I can see what people are doing because I had friends that were on dating apps and they talked so much about it and you know the kind of people that they would meet but I believe in organic chemistry and organic connections so meeting on a dating app to me it just doesn't work for me I'm also not a big texter so if you guys will you know ever text me you'll notice like if, unless I know I've known you for a very long time I get a little weird so when it came to finding dates in LA, I honestly was not here for it. It just kind of happened. And I, this is an honest moment. I saw him on someone else's story. I know, I saw him on someone else's story and I was like, oh, he, yeah. <laughs> and when I decided to go in to his profile, I was like, you know, his page is private. So, you know, me being me, click. What? What? Who gonna check me, boo? Who? Who? Oh, he approved the request. Cool, right? Cool. We, you know, we like Martin, and you know, we like to eat. I don't, I don't even remember what we had in common, but I remember Martin was a big thing. So we arranged to go on a date, which was cool. Um, I met him at a bowling alley, and I'll call this guy Chris because I'm gonna need to use his name a few times. So it is not Chris. Don't go looking for Chris, because there ain't no Chris. But we will call this guy Chris. So Chris and I um, met up at a bowling alley. And when we met there, it was, he was 15 minutes late. I am the late queen. I'm always late. And he was 15 minutes late. So after I talked to the Lord about my patience because I was not happy about the fact that I had to wait, which is probably how people feel when they have to wait on me, but that's not a problem. So I was upset and I was like, okay, let's move on. He gets there and he's kind of like standoffish. Like normally you should get there. You should be like, yo, my bad. I'm sorry. Like I got caught up and you know, I'm happy to see you, but he was just real nonchalant about it. And we, you know, finally get to our lane. We're, we're about to bowl, but he's real like comfortable. Like 
touching me on the small of my back and like grabbing me by my waist and, I'm, and I grabbed his hands at one point and kind of like pushed them off like hmm, okay thanks sir <laughs> we don't know each other I don't know you but it was fun it was fun it was good competition my first game of bowling is always a tragedy so there were no expectations there but in game two I came back I think I beat him I think I beat him so I ended up, I was hungry. I was like starving. And right at that time I was um, detoxing. So there was things that I was limited on eating. And I told him, I was like, look, I'm hungry. And he was like, oh, okay. And I was like, I'm about to go to the bar and get something. And I was like, you want anything? He was like, no, thank you. So I go to the bar, I order my food, I order my drink and I come back and he's on the, the little screen that they have. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm ordering food. Huh? You ordering food here in the lane and didn't tell me that I could order food in the lane. Not only that, you had an opportunity to pay for my little chicken tenders and french fries and you did it. Okay, that's cool. I could pay for my own stuff. I'm not mad because you ain't paid what, like, I'm mad you ain't paid. Cool, whatever, no big deal. First date, uh, you paying for bowling. Like dollar bowling because it was a Sunday. You're making it clear you're not trying to spend a whole lot of money, which is ideal for first dates, but come on now, buy a girl a soda. So my food comes, we're eating, we're talking, we're vibing or whatever. And he's talking to me about how he's training. He has a fitness competition coming up in the spring. And I'm like, oh cool, yeah, my sister's into that. She has a competition coming. At the time, Zip was about to go and you know, she was dieting like crazy. And he's like, yeah, I'm working with a trainer. And I'm like, oh great. So fast forward, we're, we're playing games and he's still like real, he got rude. Let me just say it, I'm trying to be nice, he was rude. You know when someone is just like, you can tell that you're not sure if they're like into you or what. And it was cool, you're not into me, cool. But like, this right here solidified it, right? I was, we sat down to play a game, we were playing like checkers, there was this huge checker set, so this was cute. Right, we were having a moment and once we started having you know time together he starts talking to me about dating in la and how it's been for me and i'm like ah you know i haven't done much of it you know just got a relationship not interested and he was asking me how i knew the area because it was in culver city well i told him that you know my friend lived not too far from there and uh i was you know familiar with the area because of that like I had been visiting her and he was like oh okay well why don't you date her boyfriend's friends have you ever been on a date and they ask you why you're not dating somebody else is that what we do is that a thing maybe that was 2019 shenanigans we're going on with that. When he asked me that, I was like, because I don't want to. Now I got a little attitude. Now I'm like, mm, now I'm starting to act like I'm from Jersey. Now I'm not here for your ish. I was like, oh, why are you asking me that? He was like, no, you have a friend who has a boyfriend who has friends here. So why won't you date them? So I was like, cause I don't want to. Then he was like, is that all your hair? I had my hair slicked back into a bun and you guys know I got a lot of hair. So my bun was rather big at the time because I hadn't figured out exactly how to slick it all the way back and, and get it, you know, to where it looks like uh, less hair, I guess. <laughs> but he was like, is that all your hair? I'm, and I was like, yes. Do you see how close my hair is to my head? He was like, no, I'm talking about the, the bun. Is that all your hair? I was like, yeah, why do you keep asking me this question? He was like, I mean, you know, black women, Y'all, you know, y'all always got some tricks up your sleeve. So I was like, oh, oh, this is who I'm on a date with. The man who likes black women, but doesn't like black women. So once he said that, my guard was already up. And I'm like, okay, well, yes, it's my hair. I have a lot of hair. And I was like, well, there's nothing wrong with wearing weaves. He was like, nah, like, I like my girl natural. Like, I like it when you have your hair real big. And I like it when, you know, 
you know, my girl doesn't wear a weave. He was like, cause it's like tricking somebody. He was like, you think you got somebody who looks one way and then you get home at night and she got her hair on the mantle and she looks very different. I was like, okay, well that's her prerogative. And I said, well, if you don't like wigs, if you don't like weave, I might not be the girl for you. I just not, I might, I might not, you know, cause I don't feel like doing my hair all the time. I like to switch up my look. I don't like to look the same. You know I got a head full of hair. Why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about this? So now I'm annoyed. <laughs> now I'm annoyed. So he goes, you know, that's the problem with y'all black women. Y'all always got something to say. Y'all got too much mouth. Now, there were some explicits that I used, but for the sake of being mindful of the people watching, I will try not to cuss. But I said, I don't give up what you think about black women, okay? We have mouths, we have opinions, and we have the right to vocalize how, exactly how we feel. He was like, um, you know, this is why I'm gonna end up marrying a white woman. I said, will you go and marry you a white woman? Enjoy your white woman. I said, black women are for grown ups. Okay, don't come at me telling me what black women do. He was like, see what you're doing with your neck rolling? I said, and my neck is going to roll. Black women are for grown-ups. And if you want a woman that is, you know, meek and mild, this might not be for you. Not just me, not just all black women. Any woman with a voice might not be for you. And it's cool. Now at this point, like, you're probably thinking, like, Desiree, what the whole hell? Why were you still on this date? Now, it is a testament to where I was at the time because I was broken, I just kind of wanted company, it was nice to be in, the, in, in his company. But then there was a point in the date where I said, is this really happening? Then I was like, yo, this is gonna be a great story to tell. But it's also gonna be a learning moment for him. <laughs> Cause the way this is about to go, the read that I'm about to give this man, he's gonna remember this forever. Needless to say, I had heard from him you know, again and again and again, and he, we would try to link up and it wouldn't work. But I'll be honest with you guys, like there was a point where I was like, mm, something don't feel right about this man. Something like my gut was like, mm, 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 mm. and I was like, why do I feel this way? Whatever, didn't think much of it. So we would try to hang out, but he wouldn't try to set an actual date. He would always try to hit me up when it was convenient for him or, oh, I'm on your side of the town, meet me here. Why? Why, why won't you set up a date? And I would be like, okay, I would be like, hey, let's go here on Sunday. He'd be like, oh, I'll let you know. So I was like, all right, look, I'm not pressed. I'm not about to, to beg nobody to be in my presence. I'm good. And I'm not really off you like that anyway. I just need to be around people and I'm trying to get out in LA. So that was kind of the main purpose. But <laughs> here goes the kicker. There was one time, I don't remember what it was. He, he, just, he just angered me. We had a conversation. He said something dumb and I was like, all right, you be blessed and I got off the phone. I deleted his number from my phone and I hadn't reached out to him. And we followed each other on Instagram and we were friends on Facebook. So I had noticed after like a month or two of not speaking to him that I hadn't heard from him. And I was like, oh. But then I realized I hadn't seen his page. You know, on my top now this man, he had he was actively posting on Instagram. This man will post at least four times a week. Okay, he was that into himself. And <clears throat> when he when I noticed that I didn't see him, I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, what's going on? So I typed in his name and nothing came up. And I was like, nah, he didn't deactivate his account. He, he's not that kind of person. So then I was like, okay, well, let me check and see, you know, from my second page, my business page. And I was like, all right. And I couldn't find him. So I'm like, what? Hmm. Ding. He forgot I was friends with him on Facebook. So I went on Facebook and as I started scrolling, it looked like he went on vacation. I was like, oh, okay, he was on vacation. He was on vacation. And the vacation was his honeymoon. Honey moon. Honeymoon. He was on his honeymoon. So 
what I realized is the whole time that we were talking to each other, dealing with one another, he was engaged. He was engaged to be married. And I think this man was just out here on some coming to America, so your royal oath. Ah, so you want to sow your royal oath? And I was, I was, I was about to be his concubine. Oh my lord, he was trying to make me one of his five wives. <laughs> there was no indication that he was engaged, let alone in, an, in a relationship. There were no pictures of a female. And he's the kind, what I realized is he was very calculated. That's why we didn't hang out with each other because she was probably in town. He was going back and forth to Atlanta where he lived. And it, yo, it, the whole thing spun out of control, like, you know, a plot twist. It really was like the ultimate plot twist. And I, I had that feeling. I told y'all I had that feeling. Trust your gut. If your gut tells you something, trust your gut. Once I realized what had happened, I was like, yo, this man was trying to see like one or two things. He was trying to do him before his wedding, but two, he was trying to find somebody just in case. Like he wasn't quite sure, he was on the fence. He did talk to me on the date about his ex and how they were on and off again and on and off again and how he decided to cut things off with her. But I guess they were on. Either that or he was still on with his now wife and, you know, he was just a dog. But whatever the case may be, I'm just glad that I didn't find myself involved with this guy because, whoo child, I had already had a, a, a crazy year. I didn't need no more drama. No more, no more, no more. So, yes. I ended up being on a date with someone who was engaged, unbeknownst to me. So before y'all think I'm a home record of triplet, it was unbeknownst to me. It was all that I needed for dating in LA. Once that happened, I was like, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Count me out. Clock, clock me, clock me out. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought about the video. Has anything like this ever happened to any of you? Where you found yourself in a situation and you didn't know you were in a situation, but they put you in a situation anyway, and you find out later you were in a situation? <laughs> Have you had somebody lie to you throughout a dating process? On one date, 15 dates, and then you find out in the end that they had a whole other life that they weren't telling you about? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time. I don't know if I wanna do that in these videos. That's what I do with my kids. Yeah, that's what I do when I'm teaching. That's what I should say. Cause y'all don't think I've got, you know, kids. I don't have kids yet. They're coming, but my kids are in my students.